Hi, thanks for coming by my poster. My name is Brianna Christophers. I'm a second year student at the Tri-Institutional MD-PhD program. My project is entitled Using Admission Statistics to Encourage Diverse Applicants to MD-PhD Programs uh, with my co-author, Dr. Ruth Gautian uh, of Wild Cornell Medicine. Uh, we hope you'll reach out to us on Twitter and let us know what you think and check out the article in the Journal of Clinical Investigation about this topic. Uh, feel free to scan this code with the camera app on your phone to get the paper. In 2014, a working group found that of MD-PhDs that get NIH grant funding, almost three quarters of them were white and greater than two thirds of them identified as male. You see similar demographic statistics for women enrolled in MD-PhD programs. Um, and in those who are from backgrounds underrepresented in medicine, matriculating in MD-PhD programs, you can see that there's only been an increase of 1.5% in the past decade. So we were thinking about what makes someone apply to an MD-PhD program and eventually click submit for that application. And we found this paper by Hadinger in 2017 that was a study on minority students who had applied to medical schools. And they found that a few of them, the only source they had were school websites um, for figuring out the admissions process because they had no family members or pre-med advisors or mentors that could guide them through the process. When you look at what are the online resources available to applicants, there's the MSAR by the AAMC, which really only provides data about MD programs, not MD-PhD programs. There are these anonymous message boards, such as those on Reddit or Student Doctor Network, which sometimes are far from encouraging for those who want to apply. A savvy applicant might find uh, the MD-PhD statistics on the AAMC website, which at first glance might be a little intimidating because for matriculants, it's a pretty high mean MCAT score and mean GPA. But if you look more closely, the range um, of MCAT scores for matriculants goes from 502, so just above passing, to 528. And for GPA, the lowest GPA of someone who matriculated in an MD-PhD program last year was 2.5. And then going off uh, what Hattinger's study showed, we wanted to know what information was actually on program websites. So we looked at 116 program websites uh, of those who had websites and found the trend that most schools were not reporting anything for MCAT or GPA. A fifth of them were giving a mean, less than 10% a range, and some were giving a minimum. The data sources for that information were varied. It could have been interviewed or accepted, matriculated. Uh, sometimes it was unknown where the data was from. Stratifying uh, by funding source, MSTPs were more likely to give a range or a mean while MDP, other MD-PhD programs were more likely to give a minimum or a mean. And we see the exact same pattern for cumulative GPA. The data tells us that there is a broad range of MCAT and GPA score, scores that are um, qualified people to apply to MD-PhD programs and be accepted. Um, perhaps if we change the conversation that might help mitigate imposter syndrome, which is known to contribute to attrition for women in URNs, because folks tend to see having a certain MCAT score or GPA as a target um, for acceptance when really it's this range that we've been talking about. So we propose that programs be more transparent about it and put the information out there. Um, and it might help those folks who may have been dissuaded by unbalanced statistics. And we hope that um, this will go towards redefining the manufactured image of MD-PhDs and trainees as perfect. Um, none of us are perfect and the data supports that. So we should be honest. We hope you'll take a look at the paper in JCI. Here's the scan, code to scan again. Thank you to APSA for inviting me to give this talk. Burroughs Welcome Fund the Tri-Institutional MD-PhD program for taking a chance and accepting me, and the NIGMS MSTP grant that allows me to be a student. Uh, please reach out to us uh, by email or on Twitter. We'd be happy to hear your thoughts on this work. And thank you again for coming by my poster.